Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about Trent Grisham and whether or not is a smart move for the Padres to move on and trade him. Um, this has been rumors that have been talked about for quite a while now. I think the biggest one is Trent Grisham involved in a Matt Olson trade. Um, that's one that I've at least seen on Twitter a lot. So not any like truth to these rumors, um, but that's the one that's been discussed a lot of him potentially being moved in a deal that involves Matt Olson, involves Eric Hosmer. Um, people have talked about a lot of three team trades where Trent Grisham is one of the big packages, um, opposed to maybe tr like instead of them having to trade a top end prospect or they trade a top end prospect and Trent Grisham and they get a, like a star player in return, like Matt Olson. That's kind of been how most of these have been, have been drawn up. Um, but I do find it very interesting. Isaac and I were talking about this when we started to record the big question mark is with this move, it would leave a huge issue for the Padres being that they would have no good defensive outfielders. None. Um, you would have basically the guys you would have under contract right now would be jerks and profile and Will Myers. Will Myers. I don't think he's atrocious in the outfield. Don't wouldn't say he's good though. I definitely wouldn't say he's good. Um, jerks and profile did not look very comfortable to say the least last year in the outfield. I think he is definitely an infielder, not an outfielder. Um, but it would leave a pretty big gap there. And I think that's one where there would be multiple corresponding moves that would come after this. And I just kind of, I don't know. What, what do you think about Isaac? Do you think that there's a chance that he is traded? Do you think it's smart? Um, and like, what would you need to see them do? Um, and then what do you think about Matt Olson as well? And, and that potentially being a move. I don't, I mean, I'm pretty torn on it. I've been a huge fan of Trent Grisham ever since, uh, you know, he, not, he became a Padre, but ever since I saw, uh, potential in him at the beginning of the 2020 season. I know it was a shortened season, but in that 60 game season, he did win a Gold Glove award and he did show potential to be a perennial leadoff hitter. And I still think he has that in him. I think uh, he's still got that Gold Glove caliber glove out in center field. He's still be able to steal a lot of bases, and he's a very inconsistent hitter nonetheless. But when he's when he's on, he has the potential to win you a ball game by himself. Um, Again, he's going to steal probably 20-plus bases, maybe 25-plus, and he's somebody that goes perfect in front of Fernando. If Fernando's batting second or clean up, whatever it is. Um, or, I don't know, maybe you want to bat Grisham second if you want to have Fernando leading off. I don't know. Maybe you want to bat him ninth if there's a DH. You can have him batting ninth and kind of be your second leadoff to Fernando. I don't know. But there's a lot of things you could do with Trent Grisham, and I don't think, you know, I'd question, I'd question it. It's just it's really hard to trade somebody when you have no other positional depth, especially not somebody as good as this guy is in the outfield. Um, now, I'm not saying I'm not in favor of trading him. I know – I don't know if he's done it recently, but I know in the past he has, I believe, declined a contract extension. I'm not entirely sure. but um, So that kind of tells me either he's banking on himself or he doesn't see himself here in the future. So that's why I'm kind of thinking maybe it's not the worst idea to trade him now. But I think his value is pretty low right now, considering, you know, he did start pretty hot in the 2021 season, but he cooled off. And I wouldn't say it was significantly. No, I would say it was significantly. Um, you know, I was looking at it right now. Everything from barrel rate, hard hit percentage, everything like that, it all went down after May. Um, so it's hard to evaluate that because you kind of have a small sample size out of both. You have the sample size from 2020 and – April through May, and then you have the sample size from May there on. So you got good and you got bad. Which one are you willing to bank on is the question for the Padres. Are you willing to bank on him being good again and bouncing back from that, from that, you know, kind of his collapse after May? Or are you going to trade him now while he's still kind of a highly touted player and go get Matt Olson? Matt Olson would be a phenomenal pickup, huge pickup. Um considering you want to fill in that that spot where Eric Hosmer is. Eric Hosmer is one of the least valuable players in baseball, and that's not a debate. Um, now, if you're able to get Matt Olson in that spot, that's a huge upgrade to somebody who could hit 30-plus bombs, hit above 260, 270, and have 850-plus OPS. Um, and I'm a huge fan of acquiring Matt Olson, but if it takes Trent Grisham, it's kind of tough. And I know you won't have to trade a lot if you trade Trent Grisham, but now it just becomes a matter of would you rather trade Grisham? Would you rather trade Hassel? James Wood? I don't know, but I've seen a pack. I've seen something that says if you want Olsen, you have to trade a 50 FV player 
a near 50 FV player and a mid-level guy. Hassan Kim was a 50 FV player. I would rather trade Hassan Kim than Trent Grisham. Um, I believe Hassel or Wood are both 50 FV. I'm not entirely sure, but I'd rather trade one of them. Um, so pretty torn on it. I think it would be a bad move, but I mean, also getting Matt Olson's a huge deal when you're able to to replace Eric Hosmer. And if you get Grisham or if you get rid of Grisham, you absolutely have to make corresponding moves to fill out that outfield. And I think that's where the biggest questions loom here is, okay, what does that mean for center field? What does that mean for left and right field? Like, what is the outfield going to unfold like? Does that mean Eric Hosmer is gone? Does that mean you save Robert Hassel? Does that mean that you save Luis Campusano? Um, and for Matt Olson, I don't think it does, but in a different move, it potentially could. So I think that's a big question here. But Trent Grisham as a player, I think it would be selling at a bad point. And I think that's been one of – we haven't talked about it a ton, but I think when we just, when me, Chase, and Isaac have just had our own discussions, one of the things that we kind of wonder about about uh, AJ Preller is he doesn't seem to know when's the right time to sell guys, when's the right time to buy guys. He seems like he buy, buys high and sells low on a lot of guys, and then you see them going have, having bounce back years elsewhere, or you see them kind of declining back to the median once they arrive in San Diego. So with Trent Grisham, I think we've seen. You brought up the tw the 2020 year that he started out super hot and then got cold. Well, you look in – or 2021, I'm sorry. You look in 2020, he was really hot, right? The only thing is it was only 200 at-bats. He had a four, over a 450 slugging, over a 350 uh, on-base percentage, and he had over 800 OPS, 200 at-bats. Then you look at 2019, his rookie year. That was the same Grisham that we basically saw last year in about 150 at-bats. So – We've seen like the Grisham that's slumping, and then we've seen those hot moments, and we've seen that talent. Um, we've seen the Gold Glove caliber defense last year. It did decline a bit. He still graded out as a as a very good center fielder, um, but not as good as his twenty twenty year by any means. However, you see the talent there, and to me, you go and you get Bob Melvin, and you're trying to invest in a coaching staff that can really develop these guys. Trent Grisham is the player to go and try to develop. Because you can make him, like you said, if you have Trent Grisham playing gold glove caliber defense and center, and he's at the bottom of your lineup, because based on some of these potential moves that the Padres could make, there's a chance that he is that nine hitter if there's a DH there. So if he's the nine hitter and he's that second leadoff and he's playing gold glove caliber defense and he gets on base 35% of the time, I really, really like that move. But Isaac, anything else you want to add on Trent Grisham? Yeah, you know, I completely understand both sides, whether you want to trade him or not. Um, the, you know, the pro of trade, or I wouldn't say pro, but like the argument for trading him is that it's too small of a sample size to bet on. And Matt Olson is somebody, and I'm not, you know, tying them together because we don't know where Trent Grisham could realistically go. It has been said that he's not off limits. So that doesn't just apply to the A's. So, um, you know, but if it is Matt Olson, you got a lot of upside there and you're significantly upgrading at a position, possibly having the best infield in baseball. Um, Cronenworth gets to stay at second and with that gold glove caliber um, defense that definitely doesn't get talked about enough. Um, I will always vouch for Jake Cronenworth, definitely one of my favorite players in my life. Um, but uh, with Trent Grisham, you, you know, even though you're getting rid of somebody who maybe has declined a contract extension or maybe has, um, you know, has a bunch of inconsistencies in his game, you're also getting rid of that glove that we've seen, you know, save save a couple home runs. And and to me, whenever a ball's hit your center field, it feels like I know it's going to get caught. Except for that one in Washington that ended up being the walk-off. It feels like every ball's going to get caught. I was there at that at that Dodger Potter game where, uh, I mean, we were already losing like 4 nothing, but he robbed a home run in the ninth, and it was one of the coolest catches I've gotten to see. So um, the glove is still there. It's just he needs to find some consistency at the plate to where – you know, like you said, Matt, he's getting on 35 plus percent of the time for Fernando if Fernando is going to be able to lead off. Um, and I'm, you know, having Grisham at the ninth spot isn't a knock to him. It's just you want to be able to put one of your best hitters down there to give Fernando an opportunity to bring in runs as, at the leadoff spot. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm still torn on it. I think uh, I'd have to see what goes with Trent Grisham to whether it's the A's or not what the package looks like 
because you don't want to overpay anymore. You have to, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you overpay again, you kind of just ruined your window. Yeah, and that's going to be the biggest thing. What is that trade potentially if he is moved? Um, and then what do they do? Who's their new center fielder? Do they go and they get a Chris Bryant once they make that move? Like there's a lot of questions that come with this. Um, but for Trent Grisham, I do. So Isaac, do you, do you feel like it would be selling a little low? I think it'd be maybe not like bottom out, but I still think that you're not selling it like a great point. Yeah, I still think you're selling a little low. Um, but like I said, if you're able to, you know, get Trent Grisham in a trade and only do like Trent Grisham in a in a low level or a mid level prospect straight up for a player, then that's not the worst thing in the world. But if you're doing like a Trent Grisham and a top fifteen prospect and maybe another low level prospect just for one player, you're selling too low. Yeah, and I think one of the big things that I the final thing I'll bring up on Trent Grisham is he has three years of arbitration of control. And I think that is a very, very valuable thing for, for baseball teams to have that where they can really find out, is this guy a great player? Um, if he doesn't show it this year, I think that, okay, if he's not moved this year and he's on the Padres next year and he's their starting center fielder, I think this would be a make or break year for him either way. Doesn't mean that he has to have a great year or has to be like amazing or anything, but I think he has to show like, okay, this is the guy that he is. Is he super inconsistent still? Does he kind of figure some of that stuff out? Does he make some adjustments throughout the season? Does he does he look like he is, has improved overall? Um, I think that those are going to be the big things going into his 2022 season. Um, but if he's not a part of the Padres, obviously that's not going to matter for for us. But like if he is here, I think that's going to be a huge. It's going to be a huge year for him either way. So with that said, I don't think his value can go much lower than the way that he ended last season and the way the Padres whole team ended. So I think that you would just be selling pretty low and like the Matt Olson deal, just some of the stuff that people have said on Twitter, like those, like the mock-up deals, I just feel like it would be selling too low on Trent Grisham. So like you said, totally depends on the moves and also depends on those corresponding moves after, but a little hesitant right now to be all in on like trying to trade Trent Grisham. So I think that's going to do it for today's episode though. Thank you all for listening and we'll be back talking Padres baseball on Sunday actually. So Sunday, 9 a.m., we'll do it at live stream from like 9 to 10. Me, Chase, and Isaac will be there, and we'll just go over, what, over whatever you guys want to talk about, Padres-wise, and then also NFL-wise as well. So talk to you guys hopefully on Sunday, and that's going to do it for today's video. So thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.